my dear learners, and welcome to Teacher Yan's Classroom. Would you believe it? We are on our fourth and last video about the patterns of development in writing. And this is also the last time that you'll be seeing this shirt. Okay? So for the past three videos, we've discussed six patterns of development in writing, and those are narration, description, definition, exemplification, comparison contrast, and cause effect. For this last video, we will be adding the last two to complete the magic eight. So once again, this is Teacher Yan. If you want to watch those three previous videos, the links are in the description box and will appear sometime somewhere here in the video. So if you are a senior high school student, you're in for a treat. If you have a reading and writing class, you are in good hands. So keep on watching. So for today's pattern of development, we will be learning about persuasion and problem solution. Let's start with persuasion. Personally, I love this pattern of development. I don't know. There's always something special about con trying to convince trying to win over your your audience persuasion is an art okay it is an art you can learn it you can develop this skill in you and you can start by writing persuasive essays so what is the goal of this pattern of development of course your goal my dear learner is to persuade or convince your reader to accept your point of view or even to change his or her point of view on a subject or on a particular matter. O, diba? That's why it's an art. Because you are given the, the power and the opportunity to alter the mindset, the thoughts, the opinion, the belief of your readers especially and most especially and ideally for a better cause okay don't persuade people to do what's wrong persuade people to do what is just and what is right so let's continue these are things to remember when employing persuasion in your essay first and foremost you my dear learner cannot persuade your reader if you are not sure if you are confused of your own position of your own stand on the matter or on the issue and once you know and once your position or your stand is clear you have to present your evidence to support your position so it's not enough to say that i am against covid vaccination i am for covid vaccination and then when people ask you why you will just tell them just because because i just want to because i feel like it so that is not enough to persuade your readers so you have to back up your position and your stand in an issue with evidence let's continue the success of this pattern depends greatly on identifying your audience. Why? Why is it important to know who your audience is? Yes, it is because a different audience would require a different style of persuading. Ika nga, kanya-kanyang kilite. So, dapat alam mo, ang kilite ng audience mo. Example, your, again, let's go back to vaccination since yan naman yung hot topic ngayon. COVID-19 vaccination. Your target audience are professionals. Okay? So, yung target audience mo, you will assume already know something about COVID-19 vaccination. ba? And because they are professionals, they are among those who might be more or less obliged to be vaccinated 
through their companies or through the organizations that they belong to. So knowing that in mind, dapat alam mo kung paano mo sila makoconvince na paniwalaan or tanggapin ang point of view mo against, let's say ha, against ka, against COVID-19 vaccination. These are professionals obliged by their companies to be vaccinated. So how will you convince them to go against the said vaccination? So dapat yung persuasion level and power mo is extreme or at its highest kasi they're already learned and they practically feel like they have no choice. Contrasted to when your target audience, let's say, are teenagers. So teenagers are in, in the present time not obliged to be vaccinated. So hindi naman sila ino-oblige ng ng DepEd, wala naman silang kumpanya na kailangan nilang magpa-vaccine kasi requirement to. So, their mindset is different from those of the professionals. So, definitely, a different group of audience would require a different style of persuading and would require a different amount and a different type of evidence para makonvince and ma-win over mo sila. Next point. Ooh, problem solving na pala. So, yun yung persuasion. So, just to answer, maybe some of you are thinking, can I employ exemplification and definition while persuading my readers? Yes. Actually, itong last two patterns can be a fusion of the other six patterns that we've already discussed. But your main point in persuasion is to really change the mindset of your readers to really get them to believe and stand by you so yun yung main goal ng persuasion now let's go to the last pattern problem solution very self-explanatory sa pangalan pa lang so the goal of this essay is to provide a solution to an existing problem okay so you have identified a problem in your essay and in the same essay you are suggesting a solution or several solutions to solve the problem. So, what do you need to do? You have to present the problem clearly. Where do you do this? Sa introduction pa lang. In your introduction, you already have to present what problem you are trying to solve. What problem are you presenting? Kasi, baka makalimutan mo, bigay ng bigay ka ng solution, hindi naman alam ng readers mo kung ano ang problema to start with. So, in your introduction, you have to already state clearly what the problem is. Next, make the reader feel the reality and the urgency of addressing the problem. Kasi, if you fail to make your readers feel the urgency and the reality of the problem you are presenting, most likely, hindi nila babasahin ang essay mo. Or if they do read it, they won't find worth in it. Parang, ano ba yun? Para saan yun? Kasi they cannot feel that this problem should be addressed. Walang burden of urgency sa kanila. So, your, one of your goals and one of the techniques that you have to really apply in problem solution is to make your readers feel that this problem is existing this problem is present in their community and this problem needs to be solved. So, yun yung mga isang kailangan mo talagang i-put out there. Clearly state the problem and clearly make your readers feel and understand the urgency of the problem. When providing solutions, you have to back it up with facts and data. So, wag mo lang sabihin na, for example, Sige, itong si COVID-19. Lately, tumataas na naman ang number of active cases sa uh, NCR. From 5,000 daily, naging 7,000 and it's still rising. So, na, na, ano na, na-establish mo na yung urgency ng problem because of, of the apparent data na umaakyat, tumataas ng tumataas yung number of active cases every day. The next thing you need to do is to back up your solutions. So, sasabihin mo na we need, for example, ha, you will suggest that restrictions should be in place again. Kasi free, medyo free-flowing na yung travel and movement. 
Dahil proposed solutions mo yung travel restrictions, you have to back it up with facts. Sa ibang country ba na hindi tumataas ang COVID-19 case, may travel restrictions sila? If you can find a country with a, with an existing travel restriction at hindi tumataas ang kanilang cases, then that's one fact that you can use to back up your proposed solution. So again, pag may solution kang present, it should be backed up by facts and data, statistics, articles, researches, or any that can make your readers feel na hindi mo lang yun opinion. But it's actually factual, it's actually doable, and other people or other countries are actually doing it now. So why shouldn't we? So parang ganun siya. Her problem, solution. Next, you may, as I have stated earlier, incorporate other pa patterns such as exemplification and persuasion. Kasi problem, solution, prep, you are presenting the problem because you want to invite your readers to solve the problem with you or to participate in solving the problem. So, yung persuasion, i-inject mo dyan. So, dahil you have to back it up with facts, yung solution mo, exemplification, i-inject mo din. So, as I've said, persuasion and problem solution can be a fusion of, ang daming fusion, no? Of the previously discussed patterns of development. Kaya silang dalawa yung nasa last na part. Because these two are very powerful actually. These are very powerful patterns of development that you can use to create and spark change. So here once again, I have a sample text. Take time to read it and try to identify if yung pattern na ginamit is problem solution or persuasion. So, this is basically about addiction. So, ano ba siya? Is it presenting a problem and a solution? Or is it persuading you as a reader to do something or to think in such a way? So, have you decided? Yes. This text on addiction employs problem solution the problem presented is addiction and yung solutions na pre-novide niya is coming up with more activities in which teens can be involved in so syempre walang masyadong facts dyan to make it a stronger essay you have to back it up with with facts pa okay how about this one Siyempre, alam niyo na to eh. So, let's just, let's just study. Bakit? Paano pinipersuade? How is the writer persuading its reader or his or her reader to think a certain way? So, the topic of this essay is drunk driving. How is the writer persuading its reader? So, di ba nag-exemplify siya? So, meron din siyang mga facts. Drunk drivers threaten the safety of everyone on the road. Cars are weapons. And drunk driving is a form of assault. That's a very strong statement. Drunk driving is a form of assault. So, it poses harm. So, ganun yung mga persuasive essays. Dapat yung words mo are very carefully chosen para yung impact is strong sa inyong readers. Diba? Because the stronger the impact, the more that they will think. And the more that they will think like you on that essay, ha, on that uh, issue. Kasi yun yung gusto mong mangyari. For them to accept your point of view and for them to stand where you stand. So, I guess that's it. Wow! Natapos na po natin ang patterns of development in writing. So, mag-review muna tayo ng konting-konti lang. What are the eight patterns of development in writing? For your reading and writing class, you always start with narration. The goal is to tell a story or to explain how something happened. Description. Siyempre, your goal is to describe a person, a place, or a thing. So, you have to appeal to the senses of your readers. Next, you have definition. To make it work, focus on one concept or term. Para wag ma-confuse ang iyong reader at hindi ka rin ma-confuse as a writer. Exemplification. Prove your point by providing as many necessary examples as 
possible. Comparison, contrast. Yung comparison, focus on similarities. Contrast, focus on differences. You can either do this point by point or in a block method. Cause and effect. It depends on your purpose, but the cause focuses on the why. And of course, the effect focuses on the end results or the actual changes. Next, we have our last two, which are persuasion. Your goal is to convince your readers to believe you or to side with you. And problem solution, where you present an urgent problem and encourage your readers to be part of the solution. So this has been Teacher Ayan for our reading and writing class on patterns of development in writing so i hope you learned something from the four videos and if you have any more suggestions on what topics we should be learning next about reading and writing feel free to leave a comment in the comment section constructive criticisms are welcome and please help me reach more learners by giving this video a thumbs up and sharing this video with your friends, with your classmates, with your family, or with anyone who would find this video useful. And if it's not too much to ask, please click that subscribe button and the notification bell so you get notified whenever I upload a new content and join our growing classroom. Learning is always fun and it will never stop. So enjoy while learning and learn while you can. Thank you and see you on our next video.